I'll see you guys in the dark. From about the age of 20 to 23, I used to spend like one or more nights in town drinking and doing what young adults do, which in my case was failing to seduce anyone but winning at pool and quiz machines. When I first started going out, at about 18 and up, I would go to many different bars and clubs throughout the night with all of my old school friends. But over the next few years, as I went away to uni, I ended up befriending locals, and I started hanging around in this one bar with this group of friends I made. This group was about 15 people, a mix of guys and girls between the ages of 18 to 25. We were the main crowd in this one bar. Everyone who came in frequently would get to know our group, and either hung around hoping to join us, or keep clear of us. I was really enjoying myself, and I started going out more often to meet my friends in this bar. I was drinking a lot and started earlier in the day. I grew out of this stage of my life eventually. So anyway, this one girl that wasn't really part of this social group, but was on the fringes, started being really friendly with me, hugging me when she saw me, following me outside if I wanted to smoke, usual stuff. It's not like she was the only person who did this, but over time, it started to become a big problem. See, at first, I thought she was just friendly. I couldn't just see her in a romantic light, because she wasn't my type, and so I just didn't consider that that she was attractive to me. So when she was friendly, I would be friendly back. This, I guess, was my mistake. I thought I was just being a nice guy. I don't want to be mean now, but I kind of have to explain her a little bit. You might describe her as obese. She was fat. Very. Not the sort of on the chubby side. Not the middle-aged, losing-her-figure type of fat. She was the round, bouncy, first thing you notice about her is that she is fat. Kind of fat. And she smelled bad, too. I don't know if that is related to the weight thing, but it meant that having her in my personal space was not enjoyable. But I put up with it multiple times a week, because I didn't know what to do. She was nice to me, so I didn't want to upset her. But the smell was so bad. Oh, and she was my age. Anyway, after I had known her a few months, and became accustomed to her just always being around me, I started to notice some territorial behaviors. So for example, if I was talking to a girl I liked, then she would often come over and make that dialogue a trialogue, you know, and she started getting kind of girlfriendly with me. She would get super upset by bits of banter, and like drama cry outside, or she would start crying about her personal stuff and other girls would come up to me and tell me how upset she was and that I should go and check on her. I'm going to call her Gurry. So I would go to talk to her and say like, Hey, don't get upset. What's up? And she would instantly be fine and hugging me and stuff. And like, ugh. So as this developed, I started getting tired of having to stop what I was doing to go and see if Gurry was okay. I stopped. She would send naive girls to go and ask me to check on her, and I would just tell them I didn't care what Gurry was going and doing, and it had nothing to do with me, and the girls would tend to agree. You would think problem solved, right? Somehow, she got my number, so I would be at home and I would get texts asking me to come to the bar, or I would get personal texts like, I'm upset with you because of last night. Sometimes I would engage in conversation with a rather confused attitude and other times I would just ignore it. Pretty soon, it got to the point where she would be in the bar every time I got there, or she wouldn't be there, and I would be relieved. But she must have convinced a few people to notify her if I was in there, because she would turn up not long after I got there. I would be dreading the moment the door opened, and she would say hello to everyone in the bar, slowly, but deliberately making her way to me. So I decided I needed to distance myself from her because I was feeling a tad pursued, but at the same time, I didn't want to stop seeing my friends, some of whom I was actually interested in, and some of them were into me too, but this gurry girl's drama was really making it difficult. So I started just casually walking away from her. If I was heading outside to smoke and saw her follow me, I would squeeze into a position that meant she couldn't stand next to me, 
or I would pace back and forth so that she couldn't get too close to me for more than a second. If I was talking to people and she appeared, I would move over to a different conversation. She would follow soon after. I remember a few times where I was literally running in circles around the pool table trying to get away from her. Once she figured out what was going on, she started using psychology. She would bitch about me, stir rumors up about me, and just generally try to turn people on me. On the occasions that I would be talking to the same people that she was, the conversation would quickly become about me. She would know about everything I had said to people. Any drama that involved me, she would know about. And it seemed like anyone who had reason to be upset with me, or had some past issue with me, was being interrogated for information. I don't know what to do about it, so I just went back to being friendly with her. It was better to have her as a stalker than to have her as an enemy. I figured she would get tired of this. She didn't, but something better happened. Playing pool with this guy one day. He was a friendly, suck-up, nervous, skinny, spotted kind of guy. Anyway, I was beating him at pool over and over again. And Gurry was there being a mix between a cheerleader and a bitch. She was constantly commenting on our game and trying to get a rise out of me. I was just taking the piss out of her back, but it was pretty friendly. Our weird dynamic had gotten quite comfortable now. Anyway, he picked up on the way I was speaking to her, and he started mimicking it, and she was enjoying it. So I was like, holy shit, light bulb. It was his turn to break the balls and pull. But before he took his shot, he needed to pee. So I went outside for a smoke, and Gurry followed me, naturally. I started playing matchmaker, telling her that clearly this guy liked her. Do you like him? That kind of thing. Telling her that she liked him, and I could tell because of the way she was talking to him and stuff. I don't know if she liked him immediately, or if she thought it was making me jealous. But either way, she started getting way more obvious with her flirting with him and me, which was fucking gross, but I held it together. Finally, I got the chance to speak with him without her around, and I didn't need to convince him that he liked her at all. This dude just straight up liked her and was open about it. I was flabbergasted, but so freaking happy about it. I told him he had to ask her out. He said that he couldn't. He didn't know how. I was like, fucking hell. She defo likes you. I can tell. He was still too scared to do it. But when they were next both in earshot of me, I said, you two seem really good together. You should totally try, like, going out together sometime. Looked at each other all embarrassed, but didn't agree to anything, so I made them give each other numbers. And over the next few hours, I started asking them when they would be next meeting up. I went full out getting the rest of the bar involved, making them the center of attention. By the end of the night, they were in each other's arms. They really got on. I saw way less of Gurry after that. Every time I saw either of them, I would ask if they were still together. And they fucking were. Haha, <laughs> it worked. Maybe they still are now. I don't know. It's been like six or seven years. It was a pretty happy ending, right? The funny part is, he was one of those super skinny guys. So that stereotype of skinny guys and big girls might just be true, you know. The story of how I put up with this vicious stalker bitch, who I secretly had a strong dislike for, but put up with because she was too psycho for me to handle. And then the universe, or Cupid, or whatever, totally saved me, and it was just a happy ever after. I live in a house that is huge and beautiful, but there's one problem. I'm often home alone, and our house has giant windows. I'm a 23-year-old girl that's going to college nearby, and I live at home in order to afford school. My mom and stepdad have much more of a fun nightlife than I do, so they often go out of town. We live on a lake in a nice private lake neighborhood that's supposed to be a monitored but it often isn't due to lazy patrolmen. I have no self-defense because I'm so small. In a neighboring town, we have another house, and I used to live in it. We bought it so that I might have lived close to my college, as it is three streets away from it. 
I had a stalker there that would leave gifts, footprints by the window, and letters. I know who she was. She had been a classmate at my college that was not accepting, that I had no interest in dating girls. I filed a police report, and we have been called a few times because she has been seen entering our backyard, even though we haven't been back to that house in a while. I definitely know that gut feeling when I'm being watched. I'm back at our main house due to that experience, and have been here a few months now. It's 40 minutes away from our other house, and it's extremely difficult to find. We live on a road impossible to find on GPS, and only my closest friends have been out here to visit. Two weeks ago, I called the cops. I had been home alone sitting upstairs, and I saw a figure in our yard, and then heard doorknobs being rattled downstairs shortly after. After the cops showed up 45 minutes later from getting lost, they found no one and assumed it was someone attempting to break in. Whoever it was definitely saw me because our windows are huge and located everywhere, and I sat right beside three windows that are 15 feet by 13 foot. This house was custom built for my mom and stepdad. We have giant windows everywhere, including all of the bedrooms. Some of our windows are so big because they previously had belonged to an old church at 17 foot high. Even my room has four large windows that luckily fit blinds, but most of our windows are too large for blinds or for curtains. Basically, everyone can see into our house, whether they are in the front yard, backyard, in their boat, etc. It doesn't matter. They can definitely see into a big portion of the house. And the house itself is huge. There are eight doors that I constantly check to make sure they are locked. I have two dogs, one of them being an English bulldog. A week ago, I got home and found a framed art print of a bulldog with sarin wrap wrapped around it. No note and no context to it, so we have no idea who left it. I'm an artist, and I often share pictures of my bulldog, so I feel it's aimed towards me. We asked all of our friends, family, and even neighbors. Nobody knows who left it. Tonight, I finished some assignments and immediately laid down in bed. After about 20 minutes, I heard knocks on my window. My dog was in the hallway and started barking as soon as it happened. After laying down for 10 minutes frozen in fear, I got up to try to see if there was someone or something out there lurking in the dark. There wasn't from what I could tell. This all happened tonight, and I'm still laying here scared. The cops take too long to get out here and would probably get lost again. And my anxiety is so high, I guess from my past experiences. I've called my older brother and messaged friends to let them know what's going on. All eight doors are locked. I just triple checked them. I honestly don't know why I wrote this out. It sounds silly writing it, but the feeling of being watched is just so scary. Two days ago, I went out to try my luck at finding some toilet paper. The local shop is only a five-minute walk from my house, but it takes me past the dodgy pub, bottle shop, tab, and then an underpass that goes under the train line. It was about 3 p.m. and was a sunny day. I was just past the pub and crossing the road to the underpass when I saw a tall, black dude with dreadlocks. He was in the entry to the underpass but he's holding on to a handrail and leaning out, looking around intently. He looked in my direction and then back into the tunnel part. I didn't think too much of it at first because people do hang around there to wait for trains or rides. I was wearing headphones with nothing playing as I often do. I entered the ramp that leads to the tunnel and walked down. It was dark at the bottom and there was a stretch of the walkthrough that was a bigger area with two ticket machines for the trains. After that, about eight meters of steep stairs led back to the street on the other side. As my eyes adjusted to the dark, I saw the same guy hiding in a corner in the shadows. He was standing still, flattened against the wall on the other side of a ticket machine. Just then, a couple started heading down the stairs towards us. They were out of his view at that point. He said, what? At me, and started walking towards me really fast. I decided to buy some time and de-escalate, so I pulled my headphones out as if I hadn't heard him, 
and while continuing to power walk the stairs, and said, Sorry, what was that? I have headphones in. And literally smiled at him, pretending I wasn't freaking out. A couple passed me, and I was about to reach the stairs when the dude also reached me. He was so tall and big, and I am about five foot tall. He said, What, are you scared of me? I just wanted to ask you for a smoke. I said I don't have any, and he kept coming closer and closer, and trying to cut me off from exiting by just positioning his body. Then he looked behind him to see if the other couple were out of view yet, and yep, they were gone. The gesture of checking that we were alone was what made me panic. He started reaching his hand towards me. It was only about 30 centimeters away. I gasped. And as I gasped, I started full-on choking and coughing on a bit of spit. The guy jumped back instantly and started backing away from me. I kept coughing and choking up the stairs as he started yelling out, Do you have a virus? Do you have it? I yelled that I didn't, and he actually started laughing at me. He was gone by the time I had to come back. It was a really scary situation that ended up giving me a giggle. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.